What is up, Flick fans? Welcome. No. Come on. Come on, no, please. No. What is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. Brand new show dropped today. It is called Quran. This is a non-spoiler review for the most part. At the end of the video, after I give you my score, we're going to dive into a few things because this has to be one of the hardest non-spoiler reviews I've ever had to do just because of the big uh, element of this show I don't want to reveal to you guys uh, just yet. We'll do it later in the video and I'll definitely let you know when. So if you enjoyed this show, if you're excited for it, let me know all of those things in the comments down below. Be sure to smash that thumbs up button. Let's get into it. So this is a series about a woman who returns to a mysterious village in northern Italy where she grew up only to find her past returning to haunt her and her teenage children. So this is one of those shows that thrives, survives, works because it establishes a sense of atmosphere. From the beginning, in the first episode, you know what this tone is going to be. Not overly comedic. Sure, there are a few teenage elements in there, some tropes, some relationship drama, and some uh, things that I think the show would have been better without at the beginning. But as you progress, you slowly start to realize that this is more than what it looks like it's going to be on the surface. And that's one of the reasons why I don't want to get into spoilers just yet or reveal the thing that is hard not to reveal in a review like this because it's just like you have to talk about it, but you can't. So I do want to talk about the fact that this show looks good visually. It is well made. I do enjoy the color correction for the most part. There were times when it was a bit too dark. I, I said to myself, you know, I'd like to see what's going on. Can't really do that. But those are the moments that become more integral as the show progresses. And speaking of progression, uh, this is one that had to capture me by the first episode. Didn't necessarily do that. I was somewhat in because they go to this town. There are creepy elements here and there. The way that certain people act, you know what is up. It somewhat reminds you of The Shining in a sense. It brings in elements from other movies that I'll talk about here in just a second. Uh, but overall, it gives you enough to be interested, but it refrained from going full on into the story until episode three. Episode three was somewhat of a turning point for me. That's when I sat back and said, oh, Stuff is going down, things are changing, we're not focusing as much on the relationship drama, and not that I hated that aspect of the show, it just felt a bit off at times, because tonally, this show is really dark, and frankly, they're dealing with adult things. We're talking death, uh, we're talking some horror elements. Now, I would much more classify this as a fantasy thriller with some mystery aspects thrown in. But there are horror elements uh, that worked really well. Some jump scares that they attempt. I don't necessarily get scared with those kinds of things, but hey, they worked well enough. But the reason why I say episode three is kind of the turning point for what this show was is because it allows us to finally understand what the big uh, twist and what some of these reveals are going to be. It starts throwing us backwards in time uh, and fleshes out some of these storylines that started generations ago. Not diving in too deep there, but it's really when the fantasy element started to come together a bit more. The episode is titled The Killer, so there are stakes within this show. An issue I have with Netflix shows nowadays is sometimes uh, they try to get dark and they throw us some things here and there that attempt to get to that level, but they just get too cheesy at points. This show was never cheesy until they focused on what happened with the high school kids and they're going out with their friends and they're playing drinking games and they're getting drunk and they're in and out of relationships. And I think there's definitely an audience there that is going to care about that aspect of the show. But when you have something so sweet and interesting over here, but you slowly start to add in these other elements that make it a tad bit convoluted, that's when a show becomes messy for me. And I do believe Quran at times becomes a bit too messy for its own good. And it really drags itself down when you start asking questions as well. When you get to the end of season one, uh, there are some questions that I think will be answered later on down the line if we were to get a season two. But there are also questions I have regarding the lore of this town and the fact that you have this creepy bell tower and what spawns from that. I'm thinking... I need to know a bit more. Now, we know the family's involved, and we know this curse follows certain characters, uh, but I wanted to know how these things came about a bit more. Now, again, these are things that you can dive into later on down the road in another season, but some of them, 
I think had to be addressed in season one. So it did leave me with a few more questions than answers, which is both a good and a bad. And like I said, I appreciated the acting on a level that you don't get often in a show like this because everyone embraces their role A, but they can also hit those emotional levels. Uh, and there are layers. I mean, obviously, if you've seen the show, you know what I'm talking about. There are layers to these characters and certain characters have to uh, express themselves in a different way. I'll say that at times. So that adds a lot to it. So I'm impressed with the show from really a direction standpoint somewhat. The script could have used some work for me. I like some of the characters and I'm really interested to see where they go from here. The fact that this was seven episodes, a bit of a random number, but that tells me we had this story, we knew where we were going with it, we don't need eight episodes, we can't necessarily do it in six, let's do seven. It makes for a good binge. It was an easy binge, I'll tell you that much. And obviously there are adults in this show, the character of Anna, but it's really all about the kids. It's the kids going on the journey and uh, discovering the secrets within this town. It, I mentioned The Shining, but it also gave off Suspiria vibes, a, a bit less horrific than that movie, but definitely there. And then they're coming face to face with this side of their family that they have never seen before. And the show is all about uh, running from your past, but also in a way running from your present, and you'll understand once it progresses. I found that aspect to be really interesting. So, seeds planted within this season that give me hope for the future, but not an all-around super concrete season one. Some things they need to work on, absolutely. Now, I'm going to dive into spoilers here in just a second, but first, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys my score. 65% for season one. Once again, not horrible, some elements that they need to work on, but I was interested with the mystery side of the show, with the fantastical side, and that's what I think they need to focus on in season two. Too much teen angst for me to uh, really enjoy this, but again, certain audience members will really enjoy that, so maybe the show worked overall as a whole for you all. I need you in the comments down below, but as for spoilers... We're dealing with doppelgangers. The other reference I wanted to make was the movie Us. I mean, that is the most clear one to me when you realize, oh, oh, they're just rising up out of the water. Uh, alternate versions of our characters, opposite versions of our characters. And while I was left with plenty of questions, that final episode did tie up uh, many loose ends when it comes to the mystery of the bells and the fact that you have these clones running around all throughout town. But my biggest question was the fact that we just never got to uh, look into the origins of the lookalikes. We don't know if they're actually human, we don't know if they're monsters, and if they are monsters, well, what does that mean when it comes to the children of the doppelgangers? How does this affect uh, the family aspect of these relationships? You see where I'm going? Maybe these are questions that I shouldn't even be asking. Maybe I'm looking too far into it. But there are a lot of elements that just had me scratching my head like, I just want to know more, and that's good that the show is sparking curiosity. That means I am interested enough to feel that way. And I found some elements, like I said, in the show that were extremely extremely fascinating. That aspect alone, I mean, just seeing them rise up out of the water, and then one scene when he's pulling him under and he comes back over the boat, I'm like, that's really interesting. And this has a fantasy element that, you know, you do see quite often. I mean, the concept of lookalikes and doppelgangers and clones, we've seen it a thousand times before, but uh, just the fact that they're doing it in this way with the use of the bell tower, I think is interesting. So this show has something. There are roots. There are seeds planted that could make for a fantastic show in the future. I just think it needs to be tightened up just a tad bit more, focusing less on these relationships that we don't care as much about, focusing more on the mystery. I think some people will spark, uh, is this similar to Dark? Could it be a show on that level? Obviously, it's not on that level uh, just yet. In terms of where it goes and how it resonates with its potential fan base, I, I just think it comes down to... Uh, who is watching the show and what are you in it for? Do you care much more so about the relationships? That's kind of the opposite side of the spectrum uh, from what I was on. I was much more fascinated with elements leaning more towards the sci-fi landscape, the sci-fi world. That's what I like 
in a show like this. And when you get into that teen angst that Netflix often gives us, it just becomes conventional and it's full of tropes. And I've seen it a thousand times before, so I want to move more heavily into the interesting stuff. Uh, but again, for some, the relationship aspect could be the interesting stuff. I just, I, I don't feel that way, unfortunately. As for this show, as for Quran, I appreciate you guys for watching this video, and I need to know all of your spoiler-filled comments down below, but use a spoiler tag if you're talking about these things. Otherwise, if you'd like to see me talk more in detail about the ending, let me know in the comments down below. If I get enough of you guys wanting that, I'll definitely do it. Appreciate you for watching this review, and I'll see you soon.